cold. A little cold. That was 24-something degrees. So, hey, I'm glad you're here because it's warm where God is. He warms our hearts. John Wesley said, my heart was strangely warmed. And that's what God can do. We've come here for one reason, and that's to worship the living God. He is the great I am, not the great I was or I will be. He is the great I am. He is present with us. Present. And I, my, my hunger, and I hope it would be the hunger of this whole church, is that you know He's here. That you see and experience His presence in your life, um, individually but corporately. But if not, before you leave here, you'll know you've been where God is. Uh, if if that doesn't happen, then uh, there's something disconnected. Our desire is to be completely connected to the living God. Amen. Amen. Let me call uh, read you a call to worship. Um, this was shared. Well, I'm not going to share where it was shared, Joyce. <laughs> Psalm 77. A lot, of, a lot of downhearted stuff here. I cried out to God, yes, I shout, oh, that God would listen to me. When I was in deep trouble, I searched for the Lord. All night long I prayed with hands lifted toward heaven. But my soul was not comforted. I think of God and I moan, overwhelmed with longing for His help. You don't let me sleep. I am too distressed even to pray. I think of the good old days long since ended when my nights were filled with joyful songs. I search my soul and ponder the difference now. Has the Lord rejected me forever? Will He never again be kind to me? Is His unfailing love gone forever? Have His promises permanently failed? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has He slammed the door on His compassion? And I said, this is my fate. The Most High has turned His hand against me. But then I recall all you have done, O Lord. I remember your wonderful deeds of long ago. They are constantly in my thoughts. I cannot stop thinking about your mighty works. Oh God, your ways are holy. Is there any God as mighty as you? You are the God of great wonders. You demonstrate your awesome power among the nations. By your strong arm, you redeemed your people, the descendants of Jacob and Joseph. Sometimes when he seems far off, He's at work on our behalf. If you're able to stand, let's stand together. Father God, we often complain about what you haven't done. But Lord, as we gather here this day, we want to celebrate and proclaim what you have done. And so, Lord, as we celebrate your great faithfulness, your redemption, the gift of your Son, eternal life, we come to give you praise and worship you and give you glory. Lord, enable us, as small as we are, as inadequate as we are, to bless you and to bless your name together. Lord, come and... Fill your people with your presence that we might honor you with all that we are and celebrate you well together. We ask it in the name of Jesus and let all God's kids say together, Amen and Amen. Turn to page 67. Love of God.
and tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair bowed down in care, like a song to share. And falling from in sin. Oh, love of God, how rich in you, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels' song. When years of time shall pass away, and earthly throne and kingdoms fall, when men who hear refuse to pray for rocks and hills and mountains tall, God's love so sure shall still endure all measure and strong, redeeming grace on Adam's race, the saints and angels' song. Oh, love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong, it shall Turn to page 506. I will sing of my Redeemer. I will sing of my Redeemer and his wondrous love to me. On the cruel cross he sung. set me free. Sing, oh, sing of my Redeemer. With His blood He purchased me. On the cross He sealed my pardon. Made the
Amen. Tell your neighbor how good looking they are and how glad you are they're here today. <laughs> Act like you like each other. Hey, Bird. I'm sorry. I don't know if we've run out of gas or something, but there's no heat. Um, it, it, it's definitely 71, but it said it's 64 degrees in here. Oh, okay. Yeah, but there's no heat. But, but we can, I can check on it. Okay. How y'all doing? Just, just check. <laughs> um, the heat is on. Not just the song. The heat is on. But something's not working. So I apologize. Sit really close with somebody you like. Really, yeah, get, get real close to somebody you like. I'm going to sit here with Miss Jolene. Okay. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> oh. So I apologize for that. We will figure that out. We will get that figured out. Y'all didn't love on each other long enough. Um, before we receive our tithes and offerings, let me say a, a big special thank you. A special thank you to everyone who attended the fifth Sunday night singing at North Kannapolis. I think Ted said we had 25. Something like that represented Bethel. Y'all are awesome. Um, I had battled diverticulitis a week or and a half ago, and I think I finally got through it. It just, uh, that's some mean stuff. I don't know if you've ever had any of that. Uh, but thank y'all. Several of y'all sang. Thank you so much. Uh, the Lord was honored with y'all's praise to Him. Special thanks to all the ladies who attended the women's meeting. And they did some planning, so uh, we know God's going to bless that and use y'all. He always does. A big special thanks to everyone who brings donations uh, for CCM and the person who delivers them so they get there. We had 93 pounds, I think, this week. Uh, we take it once a month or so. Uh, I forget, maybe you forget. If you can remember just to bring some non-perishables with you to church, uh, right inside the coffee room, right here at the very at the front door is a, a tub, and you can drop cans in there or whatever you bring. Uh, if you're interested, you can go to CCM's website and see exactly what they need because uh, it changes occasionally. Uh, but let's let's try. I'm gonna try to do better. So maybe y'all can ask me next Sunday, Joe, did you bring any cans? Then I'll really feel bad, Adam. So don't don't pick on me too bad. Okay. So big thank you. Uh, you know, Jesus says, I was hungry, and you fed me. And then special thanks to our worship leaders and all our musicians who enable us to worship by sharing your gifts. We are very grateful. Thank you, thank you. You know, worship is very important, and praising the Lord is a big part of worship, and it's good to do that well together, and we are very, very blessed. Um, it takes all of us working together uh, to build His kingdom. Uh, so as we receive our tithes and offerings this morning, uh, I tell you every week, some of y'all get in early. You want that thing right in there. Uh, you can come as Miss Jolene blesses us. You can uh, give after the service. Do what you and the Lord have decided, uh, but we're going to sing praises to Him together. Come on, Brother Mike. Oh, please stand with me. <laughs> Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him, all the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. 
Amen. I'll meet you in the morning. You know, when we get to heaven, it'll just be morning. And people we have missed for a long time. Uh, it'll just be morning. We'll all start it off good together. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. I, I know it's cold in here because Connie said it's cold. I've never seen you cold in my entire life. So uh, I apologize again for that. Uh, hopefully we will get that reconciled real quick. Um, we're going to go together to the Lord in prayer. Um, do you have any big burdens? A big praise, Miss Sassy is here. She's had a rough week. Praise the Lord, Miss Sassy. You you shining back there. So we're glad we're glad you're here. Amen. Uh, what do we need to pray about? Do you have any heavy burdens? Yes, ma'am. Elaine. Mm. Mm. That's tough. My mom went through a ton of that. You know. Anything else? Have you? Yes, sir, bird. Oh. Okay. Amen. Yes, sir. Oh, goodness. Mm. I added him to the list too, Matt. I can't find him, but I <laughs> I put him in there somewhere. Remember, Chris? And you know, the, isn't that how the devil works? You're already down, and then another thing's added to the list of things that you have to, to struggle with. I was talking to a person in the early service. Um, the company she works for is leaving the location they're in, but the location they're in is going to hire a few of the people. And so a lot of turmoil in her life, just not knowing uh, where she's going to work and who she's going to be working for. And, and so that's, that's very difficult, very difficult stuff. So let's pray about that. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm. Mm, mm mm Yeah, that's stressful. Mm. Absolutely. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I'm praising the Lord. I'm better. Man, I had a rough couple of weeks. So, uh, God is good. Yes, ma'am, Janice. Okay, remember Rita and Doug. Somebody, yes, ma'am, Joyce. Okay, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I like taking names off for the right reason, not for the wrong reason, and you know there's a difference. So uh, that's a good praise, so let's, let's celebrate that. Hmm. Amen. Yes, ma'am, Sassy. Hmm. Hmm. Amen. Okay. Well, we praise the Lord with you, Miss Sassy. Things you're trusting to a really big God. I ask this every week. It's just a reminder to me. Has He ever helped you before? Could He do it again? Yeah. Why don't we ask Him? See what He says. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we bow before You in thanksgiving, being mindful that You are the God who has shown up in each of our lives in unique and special ways, and Lord, so often we forget how you have cared for us. So Lord, 
uh, I just say, I'm sorry, Lord, that, that too often it just seems like the pain overrides the praise. So, uh, Lord, we just want to thank you for all the ways you've worked. Thank you for helping Elaine uh, this week. Thank you for helping Sassy. Thank you for working in Rhonda's body. We are grateful, Lord, that you touch, that you help. And, Lord, we ask. And, Lord, you answer. And we are grateful uh, for all these things. And, Lord, we've been praying for Chris. And, and then again, uh, another, another struggle, loss of a job. God, just make a way. Make a way where it appears there is no way. Lord, we know only you see clearly. Uh, we see dimly. We, we see foggily, but, but you see clearly. Lord, we pray for Rita. And, Lord, you know her battles have been great. Her needs have been great. And, Lord, we're just asking for something just miraculous, just to remind uh, Reed and Doug of how faithful you are. Just help her, touch her back. We pray for Rick that you'll take the pain from him. Lord, if he can't get any help any other way, would you, Lord, be his way and be his help and his healer and give him strength? Lord, we pray for Miss Joan that this vertigo will end and she will be back on her feet and feeling well. So, Lord, you do that for Miss Joan. Uh, this procedure Bird's going to be having, Lord, take care of him, watch over him, and uh, touch him as only you can, and for, uh, for others, Lord, for Steve Christie having something tomorrow. You care for him. Let him know you walk with us no matter what the issue, no matter what we need. Uh, you are there, and you are faithful. Take care of Larry, uh, Lord, as he has uh, something else done as they figure out what's happening for Matt as he gets ready to go to Duke. Lord, you just, you just take care of things, and we will celebrate all that you do. We thank you for helping Zoe, and Lord, what a praise to you, uh, miraculous. So we're, we're just grateful. And Lord, I thank you for being my help and my healer. So Lord, we just trust you. Lord, we know you're doing good. We know you're doing good. And so Lord, open our eyes that we could really see what you're doing in our midst beyond what the enemy would whisper in our ear. Lord, allow us uh, just a glimpse of your glory being made manifest in our presence. And Lord, we'll just be uh, so grateful and so thankful. Lord, you care for us. You know each and every one of us exactly what we need and when we need it. Help us to have the faith to believe it, to trust you for it. And Lord, we know that you'll do good for us, your perfect, pleasing will. So Lord, we are grateful. And so, Lord, we pray, as your Son taught us to pray, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Uh, there is one little typo. I thought uh, we would have a great celebrity here, but we got Junior Grayson couldn't be here today. So thank you, Junior. <laughs>
I could hear it in the back. It was coming through one of those microphones. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Junior. We're spoiled. We are spoiled. I, didn't I say something about all those musicians we're grateful for? Um, I had to go get my phone. Uh, you know, technology can be a horrible thing, but it can be a wonderful thing. Because uh, you can find stuff you forgot that you were supposed to find, and it's still there somehow. Um, it's it's that month, you know. It's February. Y'all well, well aware of that? That's hard to say well and aware at the same time. Uh, and you know, every year, it just, it just my small brain, it says, you got to remember about love in February. It's, it's, it's about that. And we were talking about getting a fresh start all through January. And I got to thinking, well, uh, when we start to think about love, what, what's important? And I thought about things we love. You know, you can, you can know what somebody loves. You know what I'm saying? If they love their car... Y'all know what I'm talking about? They will wax that thing. They will wa It doesn't matter if it's 38 degrees outside. They will work on that car. I was at Whitley's yesterday. Whoa. Wasn't my car. It's Valentine's month. Just doing my part. Uh, you know, it's interesting. I've never hunted, and some of y'all are hunters. You'll get up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Is, it, is that something like that? Is that right? What, what time do hunters get up? It's pretty early, isn't it? Four, five, whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, that ain't PM. And you know they love it because you asked them to get up any other time. I just can't get up that early, you know? You know, there's things we love, and, and it's amazing how we respond to that, that, that it grabs us and it, enables, it it gives us superpowers. If we really love something, we can just do uh, beyond what we ever thought we could do. And, and so I, I, I was thinking about, Songs that talk about things we love. And here's one. It's called, I'm going to miss her. Well, I love her, but I love to fish. I spend all day out on this lake, and it's hell is all I'm going to catch. But today she met me at the door, said I would have to choose. If I hit that fishing hole today, she'd be packing up all her things and she'd be gone by noon. Well, I'm going to miss her when I get home. But right now, I'm on this lake shore, and I'm sitting in the sun. I'm sure it'll hit me when I walk through that door tonight. Yeah, I'm going to miss her. Oh, looky here. I just got a bite. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm telling you, you can love, you can love the wrong thing too much, uh, the wrong thing too much. Well, and then this is a song I had in my mind all week. I, when I was a little kid, uh, every once in a while I'd get a ride around with my dad and WWNC, AM, 54 point something, I don't, huh? 570, up in, up in Asheville? Yeah, WWNC, had good music. And this was one of the songs I heard. Y'all ever heard of Tom T. Hall? Oh, yeah, you'll want to sing this. I love little baby ducks, old pickup trucks, slow-moving trains, and rain. I love little country streams, sleep without dreams, Sunday school in May, and hay. And I love you, too. I love leaves in the wind, pictures of my friends, birds of the world, and squirrels. I love coffee in a cup. That's for Doug. Little fuzzy pups. Bourbon in a glass. And grass. And I love you too. I love honest open smiles. Kisses from a child. Tomatoes on the vine. And onions. I love winners when they cry. Losers when they try. Music when it's good. And life. And I love you too. Uh, I think Tom T. Hall knew how to say a thing or two. Uh, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, and so I got to thinking about things we love. And then I thought, well, what does Jesus love? And um, we were, 
I, I, last week I was talking to some folks and we got to sing a Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is. Yeah, you have to do that when you sing it. And I thought about things Jesus loves and this text came to my mind. And um, I had kind of missed out on this text in a way because whenever I looked at this text, all I could see was husbands and wives. When buried in there, and actually more so, is this reality that Jesus loves the church. So there will be some examples. It's that month. And then we'll pay attention to the things that Jesus loves. Let's hear this reading uh, from God's Word. Ephesians 5, beginning in 21. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the Savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ... So you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. For husbands, this means love your wives, just as Christ loved the church. He gave up His life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's Word. He did this to present her, the church, to Himself as a glorious church, without a spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church. And we are members of His body. As the Scriptures say, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. This is a great mystery, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. So again, I say, each man must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. I got down in the weeds, you know, and I always, I, I, th there was something bigger. Have you ever been looking at something? Do you remember those old pictures? And it, it, if you stared at it long enough and you stared at one spot, it would kind of, it would became 3D. Anybody remember those? Some of it, they, they, oh, they wrecked my eyes, give me a headache. I had a great big one and I don't remember where I got it. Uh, but anyway, it was the, it was like all the scenes of Jesus' life. But you had to get that spot. You know what I'm talking about? And get your eyes fixed and so you could see it. And this whole backdrop, which is actually the front portion of this text, is Jesus' love for the church. Well, the first thing we see is the Holy Spirit supercharger. The Holy Spirit supercharger. Um thinking about what gives power to a motor. What, what really gives power? And, and this whole idea of the church, I started thinking, where, where do you start to hear about the church? And, and Jesus tells Peter upon Peter's confession of faith that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus says, your name is now Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. This statement that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And he says, upon this Upon this rock, I will build my church. Now, if you think about the children of God before this time, uh, they went to synagogue, right? They were, they were good Jewish people. They were the children of Abraham, right? Uh, they, were, uh, they, they would have been Hebrews. And so there was a, a designation of who they were. They were the children of God. And so that's, that was the, the, the terminology used. And all of a sudden, we're going to get kind of a new term about uh, who we are as followers of Christ. And it began. In Acts 2, 41 and 42, 
we hear of the empowerment of the church. And this is a, a powerful uh, scripture here. Listen to this. Those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day about 3,000 in all. That's Acts 2.41 and verse 42. And all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. The church explodes because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Jim Cimbala, uh is the pastor of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Uh, any of y'all ever heard of that, the Brooklyn Tabernacle? Maybe you've heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle Choir. His wife started that choir with homeless people and, and just whoever came to church. And he was at a conference about five years ago, and he got to talking about the church. He said, if the church is going to survive, he said, we have to tell people about Jesus. And we have to do so in the power of the Holy Spirit because it is the Holy Spirit that gives birth to the church and empowers the church. And then we move into our text. And verse 13, I'll get to the right place where I am. Verse 13 starts to instruct us about how we should respond and how we should act. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. The backdrop to this that we didn't read uh, is, is Paul talking to the church at Ephesus. Listen to verse 10 of chapter 5. Carefully, that word carefully, careful is very important here. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. What do you fixate on? Who are you trying to please? Now, you got to please your mama, right? Hey, mom. I mean, you got to. That's, that's part of life, right? But what, what do you fi fixate on? Take no part in worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret but their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them, for the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you life. And so our text, and so be careful how you live. Wake up, pay attention, be careful. I, I think when anybody tells you to be careful, maybe they're just looking out for you because they probably care, right? Be careful because I care. And so Paul says to the whole church, be careful to the church. And then there's this practical application in verse 21. And I remember men used to love to jump into 22. You can't get to verse 22 without verse 21. And, and what's so powerful as we will go through the rest of this text, we see this is the ultimate call upon all of us. And uh, my Greek professor down at, at SWU now, Central Wesleyan College, as, as there, there's breakdowns in the Scripture, and I, when they divide it up, let me say that, the divides weren't there, right? Uh, priests put those in so that we could study the Word. And so as they, were, as they were receiving and they had letters, they divided them up by verses. So God didn't put the verses in there, right? The numbers, that is. Uh, so verse 1 and 2 in the chapters, titles and even the chapter numbers, that wasn't there. These were letters written by someone. And Paul didn't sit there and say, oh, let's put a 6 here. That'll be, that'll be good. Because we needed to see maybe if there was a break in thought or a change in thought. And our Greek professor said most English translations would get that wrong. The NLT uh, seems to get it right here in verse 21. And further submit to one another out of reference for Christ. Who's this talking about? Who's supposed to do the submitting? All of us submitting to one another. All of us. All of us submitting to one another. Why? I mean, what's the point in that? Why would we do that? Are we crazy? Out of reverence for Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. That's why we submit to one another. Because if you go to Philippians chapter 2, it says He gave up everything... He submitted to the will of God. He even submitted down to humanity and became a man and lived like us. And then he became obedient even to death on a cross. 
And in that same passage, it says we should look at everyone else as better than ourselves. How do you do with that one? That's tough, isn't it? I ain't as dumb as I look, Doug. I mean, come on. I mean, we it, it's this thought that we are so interconnected as a body of believers, those who belong to Jesus, that, that we will feed off each other in the sense that we desperately need each other. And it's under the hospice of knowing Jesus that as Jesus leads us and has called us and is in equipping us and is transforming us, we are glued together. We are glued together, submitting to one another. And then you get to Acts 2.42 and it says they were always together. Who was always together? The church was always together. Well, the practical application is we're supposed to submit to each other out of reverence for Christ. The church began through the power of the Holy Spirit, promised to come by Jesus as the initiator of a brand new people. Now back to what I was saying about what the Jews were called. All of a sudden we get this terminology, terminology of the church. We're a brand new people. We are distinctly different now and Jesus calls us out and it's going, we're going to hear it over and over. His body, and His body has a name. It's called the church. The church. Well, submission required, and it's to Christ. Again, we men often want to jump to verse 22, which is after verse 21, where you're submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ because you're going to honor Jesus. So, for wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. What is the point there? Christ is the head of the church. And what does it say about Christ being the head of the church? He is the Savior of his body. He saves his own body, the church, as the church submits to Christ. So wives should submit to their husbands. Well, an example given is wives because Paul was like, okay, you, you know kind of how this works. You remember how Jesus taught He'd say, well, there was a farmer, right? And he had to, he was going to go sow out in the field and he started casting seed and some fell on the hard ground. And, oh, yeah, I've done that and I've been sowing. And, and you know, he was talking to farmers and, and some hit shallow soil. Boy, that stuff popped up, but it didn't last long. And some got in the weeds and in the, in the thickets of briars. And, man, they just got choked out and never made it. But some hit fertile soil and the farmer's going, I know what that looks like. I know what that looks like when you're farming and you're planting and you get some seed into fertile ground, what's going to happen? It's going to grow. And what do you hope is going to happen? It's going to grow when you get a harvest and you got something to eat. And I'm all about that. Well, Paul says this example would have been a cultural thing of understanding, and so he gives us examples of, of wives, an example given. Uh, later in the text is the term illustration. And maybe that would have been a better term here. But that, I think, will grow in a minute. How the real church functions. How does the real church function? We submit to Christ. We together, as a body, as a group, united together, submitting to one another, submit to Christ because He's the head over us. Where do we get our information? Who do we need to please? Where do we need to be focused? We focus on Jesus. And we should do what he says. We are to submit to him because he is the head over us. And why is that true? Because he died for us. He's the savior of his body, the church. That's the, the, the wording there. He wanted the church. He was so desperate to keep us from being eternally separated from God. He was obedient even to death on the cross. He is the savior of the body. That's why he's the head over us. That's why He is in charge of us. He is the Savior of His body. And we are to submit to Him. You know, the real issue is, and we aren't in charge. And we aren't in charge. But we often live like we are. We often live like, I get to make all my decisions. You remember in the book of James, it says, don't say what you'll do later. Don't say what you'll do. Oh, next year I'll go to this city and I'll do that or... Or next week, I'm going to go do this and that, and, and, and I'm in charge, so I get to, get to say that. But, but we're taught to say, if, if the Lord wills. 
if God wills, I will do this. If God wills, I will do that. Uh, is that a part of your verbiage? But what do we say? Well, if the Lord's willing and the creek don't rise, right? Right? That's how we word it. And, and maybe it, it's a joke or it's funny, but maybe it's that Holy Spirit reminder, listen, the Lord's in charge. You can decide what you're going to do. You can make plans for who you're going to be, but the Lord is really in charge. He's the head, and we are the body. The head of the church is Christ Jesus, and we are all to submit to Him because He is our Savior, the Savior of the church. Whoops. No, that's okay. I could bring it up on my phone. Well, love is clarified, and this, it's growing. Actually, it's growing, and love is going to be clarified here. And our next example gets a lot longer. There's a lot more words attached to our next illustration or example. And it's all about husbands, about husbands. And I read it slowly, and hopefully you heard it quickly. <laughs> Let's hear a little bit of it again for us husbands. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. The example to be seen is men loving their wives, husbands loving their wives as a representation of what it looks like as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He gave up His life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of the Word. And then you get over to verse 28. What does it continue to look like? In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually loves, shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares, just as Christ cares for the church and we are members of his body. Well, the example, which is a lot longer, is for husbands. And this love example, love clarified, is the better example. And the better example is always Jesus. Jesus died to be the Savior of the church. I guess you would say the term that's floating around now is all in. He was all in. All the chips were on the table. There wasn't anything withheld. It was all or nothing. And Jesus was all. He is the better example. And a breathtaking view. What does this power of His sacrifice look like? He gave up His life for her. So what does that look like? And we're talking... Now, hang on to this. This, this. this makes my little brain swell. We're, we're, we're who we're talking about here. We. The, uh, usins, if you're from Cam or usins. Yuns. Yuns, I'm talking about yuns and usins. Um, this is talking about, now, now the clarification would be those who have submitted to Christ, right? That we have submitted to Christ. That's who it's talking about. And if you haven't submitted to Christ, it's not talking about you. But if you have fully yielded to Jesus, if you are fully under His leadership, this is what it looks like for us. It is a breathtaking view. He gave up His life for her to make her holy, and clean. He's talking about us. Holy and clean. Washed by the cleansing of God's Word. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. How did we get clean? Jesus came and He cleansed us on the cross when He shed His blood for all of our sins. He made us clean. He washed us clean. He did this to present her, the church, to himself as a glorious church. And that means radiant. That means bright. It's a candle on a hilltop. It is not hidden. It is radiant. A glorious church. But what is a glorious church? Talking about people, not a building, but those who have submitted to Christ without a spot or wrinkle. You ain't got no wrinkles. I'm starting to notice they pop up. But in Christ, we don't have wrinkles. We don't have spots. We are without blemish. Because we belong to Him. We're His church. We're His people. And He made us that way. That's what the Scripture is real clear on. You didn't do it. You submitted to Him 
and he did it for you. That's a hallelujah right there. She will be holy and without fault. You know, sometimes we hear this term holy, and it was the same in the text last week. We say, well, that sure ain't me. I'm sure not holy. If God has a hold of you, you're holy. Paul Paul called the the church at at, at, uh, Corinth the saints of God. And you remember all the junk he had to tell them to get out of? I mean, he said, y'all messed up. (laughs) He called them the saints of God. And he said, remember, you belong to God. You belong to God. Well, that's a breathtaking view. And we and he, I don't know how else to say that again. We and he, it's just how I see it. No one hates his own body, but feeds and cares for it, just as Christ cares for the church, and we are members of his body. We belong to his body, and his body is the church. And all that breathtaking view we got belongs to us. And and I think, how does it really happen? It's that, that merging together that we have been united with Christ in his death. We have been raised to life with Christ in his life, and the Holy Spirit has come to indwell us. We are empowered to serve Christ. And the church isn't a supercharged building that can fly away. It's a supercharged people filled with the Holy Spirit that can do what God needs us to do because we can't do it without Him. We and He are united. Well, the church was created by a sacrifice offered with clear intent. Jesus knew what would happen. For a reality beyond understanding, revealing, and defining care, He cares for us. Peter will say later, cast your cares upon Him. 1 Peter chapter 5. Cast your cares upon Him. Why? Because He cares for us. wonder where Peter got that. I think he'd been reading some of Paul's material. Beyond understanding, revealing, and defining care. Well, finally, and one forever. One forever. One forever. Well, the example was from the very beginning. And so Paul goes back and he says, Oh, you know this one. You know this one well. You you, you know how God orchestrated things. And in the beginning, he created man. And he created man, male and female. And that's how he created them. And then he, he brought the woman to the man... And, and Adam gets fired up. I know he did. He gets fired up. And he said, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And all of a sudden, it's this image of being connected, completely connected together, unified together. As the scripture says, a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife, and the two are united into one. There's a physical understanding to that, but there is a deep psychological and spiritual understanding to that as well. Paul goes on to say this is a great mystery, and here's that word illustration, but it is an illustration of the way Christ and the church are one. And so when we 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 kind of get to that point, really what Paul's saying is all this marriage talk I've been throwing at you, that was illustrations, examples, Because you need to know who you are as a church. I mean, that's what you really need to get. You need to understand who you are as the people of God. You are people united with Christ. You are glued together in Him. And you as a body are glued together in Him. It's not individual. It is corporate. And we are glued together in Christ. And we are one with Him. You know, that's heavy. That's heavy. Why do you think the Scripture talks all the time about being careful? Because He's in us, and He doesn't want to be represented poorly in this world. We represent Him. We are united. Well, the mystery points to clarity, and I don't know how much clarity you get from that. This mystery of a man and woman coming together and being united as one, and then it says is an illustration of Christ and the church being one. Completely connected, completely united together. Christ in us is the hope of glory. And so everyone can see. What should everyone see? 
Everyone should see, see the church, but that's where we, our text started. If you go back up to verse 15, so be careful how you live. And this is the final word here in this section of thought because Paul's going to jump to a whole other thought, and that's why there's a six there. So again, I say each man must love his wife as he loves himself. And the wife must respect her husband. He said, now, why? He said, this is illustrative. It's illustrative. But you know, beyond that, where we start in verse 21, we got to submit to each other. We've got to love each other, don't we? We've got to respect each other. That's what it looks like to be in his body. People who love and respect each other, who truly care for one another, who support each other. Why? Out of reverence for Christ. Why are we together? Listen, I tell you all the time, if Jesus wasn't here, I want to go eat chicken. And we can do that after church. Listen, it's all about Him. And we are united together. And so what, what does Jesus really love? He loves the church. And what is the church? Well, He said, it's my body. And what is His body? Me and you. And us and, and yuns. We're His body, and He's the head, and we're the body. And the world needs to see that, well, the church is the embodiment, the incarnation of Jesus' body living on earth in a mysterious intermingled form of God and humanity pulled together. The church is the love of Jesus personified. He sent the Holy Spirit to empower His body. Jesus is the head of the body, the sacrificial Savior, the creator of a new people, the church. The church surrenders to radical love, the love of Jesus. His transformational power is beyond our understanding. He calls us holy, without spot, without blemish. For what is not fully understood, comfort is granted by absolute care. He cares for us as the church, revealing a mystery of inner relatedness. Jesus and His church are one. And we are His church. We are His body. So what do you love? Little baby ducks and old pickup trucks and slow moving trains and rain. And I love you because I'm supposed to. We're to love each other. We're supposed to. Jesus loved the church and died for the church, for us corporately. For God so loved, how much? How much? All the way. Covered it all, didn't he? Covered it all. Do you think we ought to love the things Jesus loves? Do you think it's important to love the things Jesus loves? Do you think so? What do you think it would look like if we didn't love the things Jesus loves, if we just didn't do it? Mm. That has a, a really long penalty, I think, connected to it. Love the things Jesus loves, and Jesus loves the church. If you're able to stand, stand with me. Let's call upon His name together. Father, you know us and you know what we love. And Lord, I would just say, forgive me for not loving more the things that you love. Help me to love the things that you love. Lord, place as you do your spirit within me that desire to love the church more than I ever have before. And Lord, open my eyes to see the whole church. The whole church, please, Lord. Help us together to see the whole church. Help us to love. Help us to love each other. Lord, help us to love each other. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. Lord, help us to reverence you by how we care for each other. Lord, enable us to be people who love. Would you take hate from our hearts because we know hate is not any fruit of your Spirit. Jesus, we want to love like you do.
And Lord, help us, even as husbands, to love our wives as much as you love your church. And help wives to love their husbands just as much as you do your church. And maybe all of us together, the whole church, Lord, can be a light on a hill shining for you, looking like you. Lord, help us. Oh, we don't want to be marred in our appearance. We want to be clear. You do it, Lord. Only you can do it. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus, and let all God's church say together, Amen. Here's the blessing. And may the Lord make your love for one another and for all people grow and overflow. May He, as a result, make your heart strong, blameless, and holy as you stand before God our Father when our Lord Jesus comes again with all His holy people. Amen. Go with God and love what He loves, and He loves you. Amen. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him.